Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling Leet Code Problem 808, Soup Servings. This one is a fascinating blend of probability and dynamic programming. It might seem tricky at first, but we're going to break it down step by step. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the setup. We have two kinds of soup, A and B. We start with the same amount of each, a value called N. On every turn, we randomly choose one of four serving operations, and each operation has an equal chance of being picked a 25% probability. The process stops as soon as any one of the soups runs out. Our goal is to calculate a very specific value. The probability that soup A runs out first, plus half of the probability that both A and B run out at the exact same time. Let's make sure we're crystal clear on the goal. We're not just finding the chance that A finishes first. We need that probability, and then we need to add half of the probability that they finish on the same turn. This combined value is our final answer. Whenever you see a problem asking for probabilities of different outcomes like this, it often points towards a solution where we track the state of the system. The key to solving this is to think in terms of states, the 10. A state is just a snapshot of how much soup we have left. For example, a state could be 100 ml of A and 200 ml of B. Boke. From any given state, there are four possible next states, one for each serving option. Since each option has a 0.25 probability, we can calculate the probability of reaching those next states. This chain of states and probabilities is a perfect fit for a technique called dynamic programming, or DP. Now, here's a crucial simplification. Notice that all the serving amounts, 100, 75, 50, and 25, are multiples of 25. This is a huge clue. We don't need to track every single milliliter. We can think in terms of units, where one unit is 25 milliliters. So, if N is 50, that's just two units. Pouring 100 milliliters of A is just removing four units of A. This dramatically reduces the number of states we need to worry about, making the problem much more manageable. Our strategy will be a top-down DP approach, which is really just a clear way of saying recursion with a cache or memoization. We'll design a helper function, let's call it solve, that takes the remaining units of soup A and soup B. This function's job is to figure out the final probability starting from that state. To make it fast, we'll use a cache. The first time we calculate the answer for, say, two units of A and three units of B, we'll save it. If we ever need that answer again, we'll just look it up instead of redoing all the work. Every recursive solution needs base cases, which are the conditions that stop the recursion. Let's think them through. First, what if both A and B are zero or less? This means they ran out on the same turn. The problem asks for half this probability, so we return 0.5. What if only A is empty? This is a win condition for our calculation. A finished before B. The probability of this outcome is certain, so we return 1. And if only B is empty, that's a loss. A did not finish first, so the probability for this branch of the calculation is 0. Now for the recursive part itself, if we're in a state that isn't a base case, how do we calculate its probability? It's simply the average of the probabilities of the four states we could go to next, we call our solve function for each of the four serving options, add up their results, and multiply by 0.25. This is the heart of the recurrence relation. There's one more really important trick we need to handle. What if n is a huge number? Let's look at the average amount served. For soup A, it's about 62.5 milliliters per turn. For soup B, it's only 37.5. Since we're serving more of A on average, it's almost guaranteed to run out first if we start with a massive amount. The math shows that for any n bigger than about 4800, the probability gets so incredibly close to 1 that we can just return 1 and be within the required accuracy. This saves us from a recursion depth error on large inputs. Okay, let's look at the complete code that puts all these ideas together. We have our main function, soup servings, m of t. It first checks for that large n edge case. Then it sets up our memoization cache, memo, and calls our recursive helper function, which we've also called solve. Notice that this implementation works directly with the ML values instead of the units we discussed. Both approaches are valid, but this is a bit more direct. The logic remains exactly the same. Let's zoom into that helper function. The very first thing it does is check the memo cache. If we have a result for the current amounts of A and B, we return it immediately. This is the memoization that makes our solution efficient. If it's not in the cache, we then check our three base cases, both empty, A empty, or B empty and return the corresponding probability. If none of the base cases are met, 
We proceed to the recursive step, we calculate the probability exactly as we planned, 0.25, multiplied by the sum of the results from calling solve, for each of the four serving operations. Finally, and this is crucial, before we return this newly calculated probability, we store it in our memo cache. This ensures we never have to compute it again. So, how fast is this? The time and space complexity are both big O of n squared, where n is the scaled down number of units. Our state is defined by two variables, a and b, so we might have to calculate a result for every pair. However, because we capped the input n at 4800, the maximum number of units we care about is fixed at about 192. This means the number of states is constant, making the effective time and space complexity constant, or big O of 1. So to wrap up, what are the big lessons here? First, many probability problems can be simplified by thinking about them as a set of states with transitions. Top-down dynamic programming is a natural fit for solving these kinds of problems. Always be on the lookout for a clever simplification, like changing our units from milliliters to servings, which made the problem much easier to reason about. And finally, never forget to consider the edge cases, like what happens with very large inputs, as it can be the key to an accepted solution. Hope that breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. And hey, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.